this evening I was talking about this cathode ray tube. The DG732 and I made a video about it and well of course such a tube needs a um, high voltage to its anode. And I want to make that with the help of an oscillator and that is more or less the idea of this video. How to make uh, say an oscillator that can supply this tube with approximately 500 volts DC. And of course also the say deflection voltages. Uh, to the deflection plates and I want to refer to the earlier video. And here we see uh, the kind of solution that was used in the past in analog television sets. These are all high voltage transformers and they work all on approximately 16 kilohertz. That's important to tell. When you use uh, whatever kind of transformer to uh, generate a high voltage, it's important that the transformer is driven by a certain frequency, more or less the ideal frequency, and in case of these uh, television transformers, analog television transformers, that was approximately 16 kilohertz. So they are made for that and uh, that's in fact a quite ideal uh, frequency that you can also use to uh, supply such a cathode ray tube with a good high voltage. Uh, in all these transformers you can see uh, two more or less specific sinks. There is always a primary. That primary is here. Here this is the primary. Low voltage winding and here is the secondary. It is immersed in a kind of uh, epoxy resin. And the reason is, of course, that it has to endure the high voltages. So no sparks may um, occur in the windings of that high voltage secondary, etc., etc. So it's immersed in a very good quality resin. And well. This is, by the way, the more or less old school way of making such a transformer. It was made in Eastern Germany when Eastern Germany uh, still existed in Mietweida. Well, and I've used it uh, two times to make a high voltage generator to supply a cathode ray tube. Uh, the more modern version is this here, where we also have uh, a primary and a secondary, uh, but they are wound over each other. And of course I don't know uh, the exact supply voltage for such a uh, high voltage uh, transformer, uh, but I'm absolutely sure that say one sure thing when you, when you want to do experiments that it has to work on approximately 16 kilohertz and that is more or less the the basic id feature uh, to which i have to focus when i want to make a, an oscillator for such a, a transformer and here another say old school analog television transformer for high voltages 16 kilohertz uh, in fact it is approximately 
eight or whatever, but the resonance frequency, that's the most important thing to tell, such a transformer works at its best on its resonance frequency. And because we have here a ferrite rod, ferrite co core inside, and this is all, say, uh, manufactured in a certain way, that it has its peak resonance, so its peak voltage output out of the secondary on that 16 kilohertz. So when you want to do an experiment with uh, these transformers, this is of course the way to do it. Try to drive the primary of such a transformer with 16 kilohertz. And of course with a certain current, otherwise we don't have here on the secondary um, enough current out to make the, uh, the tube, the cathode ray tube to light up properly. And you can of course search the data sheet how much energy is necessary to make such a tube light up properly. Well, that's not much. When you look at, at the data sheet, we are talking about 500 volts at approximately 30 micro ampere. Uh, so a tiny wattage here is uh, necessary to make this tube work. Anyway, well, uh, how to get to 16 kilohertz? Well, there are a few possibilities. The first and the best uh, possibility is that you can get the whole circuit with the help of two transistors or two Darlingtons into its self oscillation. That's more or less critical and uh, say when we look at old school analog television sets that um, setup was more or less always used. The transformer was brought via a oscillator with a tube or a transistor into self oscillation on approximately 16 kilohertz. And well, you can do it and there are, uh, I have made schematics about that and they are also in my books, etc, etc. So here for instance, you see in my book. Uh, this is, by the way, the English version, Schematics 3, and this is the Dutch version. You can see in that Dutch version uh, how such a transformer, and in fact it is this transformer, is brought into self-oscillation with the help of two Darlingtons. Uh, here, how such a high voltage coil is constructed. Uh, and many texts, etc. etc. Uh, here, by the way, an oscillator that you can use in case. of such a coil with that primary etc etc. Um, that was more or less all to tell. Then you know the key information and very important of course is the high voltage diode here. Here I show on the picture a few high voltage diodes. Uh, at the moment I cannot show them, but in the past I have photographed them. These are more or less um, Eastern Europe high voltage diodes. And when you break this ceramic tube open, you will find all kinds of tiny diodes inside. And each, each diode in a series figuration um, picks up or dissipates 
uh, or range the, the output voltage. So that's a good way to do it. Typical high for high voltage diodes and here also these are European diodes and then we are talking for instance about these diodes. The B A184 that can handle approximately 1.5 kilovolts and the BI409 that can handle 12.5 kilovolts and of course not with a high current. And that's very very important to understand uh, when this high voltage diode handles 12.5 kilovolts we are talking about maximum 1 milliampere so one thousandth of an ampere where it can work and otherwise it will burn out. So the schematic again it's perhaps not very informative at the moment and I will try to make demos with really working circuits and I have already showed that. Um, this is the principle, the primary uh, low ohms coil, the secondary uh, high ohms coil and all the whole unit tuned to 16 kilo cycles so to the resonance peak. That's very important to tell many transformers when you want to make a high voltage circuit don't get to their proper resonance peak where they deliver uh, its best of energy, the most energy and these transformers are made for that specific 16 kilohertz resonance frequency and of course you can take say uh, other transformers that are for instance made for 50 hertz and you can do experiments with that but you will never get to the real high voltage frequencies at their output when you say reverse the primary and the secondary. It all has to do uh, with the way that such a transformer was constructed with ferrite materials. Uh, these ferrite materials are unique in terms of say uh, saturation of the magnetic field or not saturation of the magnetic field. Anyway, there's much more to tell about it, but it will take too much time. Thanks for watching, by the way. Uh, this is, say, the principle, and it's only a vlog. So, anyway, here is a driver transistor, here is an oscillator on 16 kilohertz. It drives the power transistor that switches the primary of the uh, transformer on and off. That's also say a good way to do that. Self oscillation is the best way but you can also use a separate uh, oscillator that drives a power transistor. For instance here with a 555 or um, an A stable multi vibrator on approximately 16 kilohertz and you will surely find in that case when all is properly made a high voltage here and it will be in the order of 2000 volts, 3000 volts etc. Of course with a very low current in this case and that is what we need to make this tube working. Thanks for watching. I only have uh, 30 seconds. The typical high voltage diodes. The self oscillating oscillator made with two Darlingtons. Perhaps the schematic again. Always working, etc. etc. And thanks for watching.